is Stone Phillips. This is how the government crash tests new cars at 35 miles an hour into a flat wall. It's considered a good test of the car's seat belts and airbags, but it may not be telling you everything you need to know about the safety of your car. This is a different kind of crash test, faster than the government's, and too fast according to some automakers. Tonight, take a look and judge for yourself as 11 small cars are tested. Here's Chief Consumer Correspondent Lee Thompson with the exclusive results in a Dateline Consumer Alert. They all claim that their cars have wonderful crumple zones, wonderfully strong safety cages. And we find that several of them did quite well. Others, their claims are not justified. Beginning the test run now. It's an auto safety test the government doesn't do. 395. For three years now, researchers at the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety have been conducting their own crash test to simulate what happens if two vehicles the same size hit like this, driver to driver, at about 40 miles per hour. This test is now accepted around the world as one important measure of vehicle crashworthiness. It's called offset testing, concentrating the forces on one side. The Institute says that's the way it happens in many serious real-world accidents. We're talking about the kinds of crashes that produce deaths and serious injuries. This is a very common kind of crash. <laughs> the Institute's seen a wide variety of results, some of them very good. Looks pretty good in there. Others, not so good. Because the steering wheel is in the lap of the driver. <laughs> They've seen everything from broken legs to serious head and neck injuries. This is the worst we've seen, I think. Now the Institute is testing 11 small cars, including some of the biggest sellers on the road. The Honda Civic, the Ford Escort, and the Saturn from General Motors. All of these small cars have passed the government's head-on test. But how well will they do in the Institute's test? You're about to find out. The Insurance Institute bought the cars right off dealers' lots, just like you would. It ranks cars as good, acceptable, marginal, or poor. Dateline had no say on how the cars were chosen, tested, or evaluated. You ready? Yep. First up, the best-selling small car in America, the Honda Civic. In three, two, one. First impressions are that this is, from a structural point of view, done reasonably well. Even though the crash looks dramatic, there are no serious injuries. Take another look with the help of the Institute's slow motion cameras. The front crumple zone is absorbing the energy well, keeping most of the damage away from the occupant compartment. As bad as it looks, O'Neill says this damage actually protects the driver. So you see this structural mem member all twisted and distorted? That's absorbed the energy of the collision. So you want this? You want that because... But near the feet, the floor is driven back as much as nine inches. Too much to get the best rating. Unfortunately, there was more intrusion down in that footwell area than we would like to see. So the Institute rates the Honda Civic acceptable. This is the Toyota Corolla, also sold as the Chevrolet Prism. It looks good because there's no major collapse up along here, and the rail area here is held together. The good news is that the safety space, the area around the driver, is intact. But the footwell near the pedals has been pushed back eight inches. Not a lot, but enough force that the sensors in the dummy say there could be a broken leg. So the Institute also rates the Toyota Corolla acceptable. The Saturn from the newest division at General Motors. You see the wheel has, is driving outward, which is a good thing. It's not driving into the compartment. The Saturn has less intrusion in the footwell area than most of the other cars tested. The foot area actually looks pretty good. And most of the dummy readings look good, too. But O'Neill spots a different problem. This time, watch the steering wheel. You'll see in the close-up the dummy's chest going into the steering wheel. It's not quite obvious, but that steering wheel is actually coming back. And that's loaded the chest quite significantly. The amount of con 
compression that could potentially cause fractured ribs. Not life-threatening. Not life-threatening, but an unpleasant injury. Obviously not something we would like to see. In all of the tests, the dummy is the exact same size as an average man. But what concerns O'Neill is that in real life, many smaller people sitting closer to the steering wheel might be even more vulnerable to chest and head injuries. What could you expect if this had been a shorter person and the seat had been moved further forward? The potential problem from that movement would be greater. So that's why we mark cars down for having bad steering column movement. So, instead of good, the Institute also rates the Saturn acceptable. This is the Ford Escort, a long-running favorite of American car buyers. Its sister car is the Mercury Tracer. There's more dashboard movement than we'd like to see. The right knee has hit the dashboard, and once again, the safety space at the driver's feet has been driven back. And there was an indication of a significant injury to the right leg of the dummy in this car. Significant meaning what? A fracture, probably possibly even a multiple fracture of the leg. But O'Neill finds some good news in this crash that's a lesson for other companies. Virtually no movement of the steering column in the crash at all. Uh, that meant that the dummy movement was very well controlled by the airbag and the seatbelt system. Good upper body protection, but because of the leg injuries, the Institute doesn't give the Ford Escort its highest rating either, but still calls it acceptable. The Institute gives three other cars, the Hyundai Elantra, Mazda Protégé, and Nissan Sentra, the same acceptable rating. In fact, none of the small cars you've seen has gotten a good rating. And here are the cars that did even worse. This is the Volkswagen Jetta. This left knee is wedged against the dashboard because the dashboard has been driven backwards. The footwell area has been pushed back as much as 13 inches, more than any car so far. And the readings indicate injuries to both legs. Some of the other cars we saw the possibility of some leg injuries, but now here we're seeing the possibility of injuries to both legs. In this car, you see more damage to the structure. It's beginning to collapse and buckle and allow intrusion into the compartment that's yeah. rather major. The Institute decides the collapse is serious enough to give the Volkswagen Jetta only a marginal rating. This is the Mitsubishi Mirage. It, it looks like there's even a tear in the floor. The safety space, the crucial zone around the driver, has crumpled in several areas. The dummy's leg is broken, and the steering wheel is driven back so far the airbag can't properly cushion the dummy. The dummy goes through the airbag because of that steering column movement, gets a blow from that, and then it goes back and gets a second blow on the back of the head. How serious were the injuries to the head? Well, they're not, again, they're not life-threatening injuries, but that double hard hit would be a problem. Potential concussion, uh, obviously very sore head. The Institute gives the Mitsubishi Mirage its lowest rating, four. And watch what happens to another big seller, the Neon, sold by Dodge and Plymouth. In this crash, there's major movement backwards you can see from all of this buckling so the steering column has moved the most of any small car so far but you see the combination of the collapsing structure steering column movement uh, is just not controlling the position of that dummy so the injury potential is significant but it turns out there's a technical problem with the dummy's leg so the Institute decides the neon has to be tested again Three, two, one. If you ever wondered if these cars would perform the same way in a second test, just watch the films. Test one on top, test two below. The repeatability of the deformation, despite collapsing and buckling and bending of structure, is very amazing. The structural damage is almost identical the second time around. I think this one is going to be very similar. And the second test shows two broken legs. So the Institute rates the neon poor.
This is the Kia Sophia from Korea, newly marketed in the U.S. Not particularly good structural performance. In fact, it's clearly uh, poor structural performance. O'Neill calls it major collapse. The safety cage has not done its job. The dummy's movement was not very well controlled. You see how the dummy is flailing around. Um, this is all related to, to the poor structural performance of the car. The floor is driven back as much as 14 inches, the most of any car. Dummy readings show the driver would have had two broken legs. We see this car as performing poorer than even the other two that we rated poor. This one does stand apart. The Institute rates the Kia Sophia poor. You didn't give any of the small cars your highest rating, a good rating. Why not? We, in every case, had more intrusion usually in the foot area, than we wanted to see. And there's another issue. If they look like this in a test meant to show what happens when one small car crashes into another small car, just imagine what would happen if they hit head-on with a bigger car, a four-wheel drive, or a truck. The laws of physics clearly indicate that if this car were in a crash with a heavier vehicle, that there would be even more damage than we see here. But some automakers say you shouldn't pay much attention to the Institute's test. For a particular driver, how many miles would they have to drive to have that type of crash? How many years of driving? 65,000 years of driving. That's how rare this is. George Parker represents an association of international automakers. He says the Insurance Institute test simulates an accident so fast, so severe, it almost never happens. Is it something you really need to be concerned about? I don't think so. 39.9? The Insurance yeah. Institute says it picked 40 as the test speed because among fatal front-end accidents, about half happened faster and half slower than 40. But even at that speed, automakers say these cars all did the most important thing. They prevented life-threatening injuries to the head and chest. My reaction to the results they did extremely well. You would have survived in every one of those vehicles. In letters to Dateline, the automakers said their cars are safer than ever, meet or exceed all government standards, and have safety features designed to help you avoid accidents. Ford told us the Institute has a vested interest because it's funded by the insurance companies and cares more about cutting insurance claims than the cost of building safer cars. Chrysler wrote, we strongly disagree with the ratings. In fact, Chrysler, GM, and Volkswagen all pointed out that on another set of rankings the insurance industry keeps, based on these real-world death and injury numbers, their cars get better than average scores. The Institute says those real-world statistics can be influenced by other factors, like whether the people driving were drunk or wearing their seat belts. The most important factor is the driver behind the wheel, but we know in today's traffic that however good a driver you are, unexpected events can occur, and then you hope you're in a car that will perform well in the crash. Since cars can be hit from every direction, automakers say it's a mistake to judge them based on any one type of crash test. On that point, the Insurance Institute agrees. So what we're telling the consuming public is, you don't just look at our test results, also look at the government's test results and find the cars that are doing well in both. If you'd like to see how your small car did on the offset test, the government's crash test, or in those real-life statistics, or if you want to read more about what the automakers had to say about the tests, visit our website at www.dateline.msnbc.com. And don't forget the first rule of automobile safety. Buckle up.